Palestinian liberation through the lens of health justice. We are responding to the call from our colleagues from health unions in Palestine to fight the Israeli war machine and all those complicit in the genocide of Palestinians and the Israeli occupation. <laughs> here outside Palantir, a US-based tech company who is not only complicit with Israeli apartheid and genocide in Gaza right now, but also has just been given a £330 million NHS contract to provide data services here in the UK. We're against that. We're picketing to prevent workers entering today, aligned with the junior doctor strikes happening today. Palantir specialise in AI-powered military and surveillance technology and data analytics with their main clients being the US, the CIA, the UK Ministry of Defence and the Israeli government. For decades they have provided Israel with what they call predictive policing services. This uses data analytics including social media and video footage to identify Palestinians who could in future commit crimes and therefore allowing the Israeli occupation forces to imprison and detain them. Their predictive policing algorithms have been known to target Palestinians for posting pictures of loved ones who have been killed by the Israeli occupation forces on their social media. A tech commentator recently called Palantir the eyes of Israel. Before October 7th, Israel held 5,000 hostages and this number has reached 10,000. Imprisonment is a tactic that is used by uh, colonial regimes and by the Zionist entity in particular to stifle popular resistance, to break the social fabric of the Palestinian people, to try and break our revolutionary spirit. Um, and because of that, we have always understood prisoners to be the compass of our struggle. They're the light that's guiding us um, to liberation. So we as the Palestinian Youth Movement demand the release of all Palestinian prisoners. AI military technology can identify people, buildings, vehicles, supporting targeting and military strategy. They literally are directly supplying Israel with the tech for target killings and kidnappings, which includes health workers. And we've seen directors of major hospitals in Gaza have been taken hostage by the Israeli army. That's using tech that Palantir has made. My name is Alia, I'm Palestinian. Um, I actually have family in Gaza. The other week, I actually had a family member who was killed in an airstrike and it's very, um, Difficult, it's very strange to be in a place where you're grieving someone who's been killed in Gaza, but actually you're in the centre of a country where the government and companies like Palantir are also complicit and part of it. Palantir proudly states, we only supply our products to the West and their allies. We never supply our products to our enemies. We are proud to support the US government and the Israeli government. We are one of the few companies in the world to stand up and announce our support for Israel, which remains steadfast. In US, Palantir has supported the identification, deportation, and child separation of migrants on the Mexico border, as well as providing AI for drone strikes in the US occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan. We as health workers say no to Palantir in the NHS, no to Palantir in Palestine. This company that seems to want to gather confidential health data on people here in order to train their systems and better target their technology in war zones. If the scheme goes ahead in its totality, it would amass the single largest collection of Britain's medical records ever assembled and will be held on Palantir's software foundry. We still don't understand what exactly it is, how it would operate, or if privacy safeguards would really protect sensitive data from misuse or abuse. Junior doctor strikes, we're striking for a better NHS. This is also a strike for a better NHS because we want our patients, which includes us as people, not just as staff members, to be safe. And if our data is in private, and if our data is in the hands of people with malicious intent, none of us are safe. It's awfully convenient that Palantir is already embedded in the Home Office, the military and border forces, because the Home Office recently requested access to the patient records of migrant patients. It was denied this request won this contract in November 2023. Earlier this year, Palantir's billionaire owner Palantir's billionaire owner Peter File slammed
defend British public health care as a system that he would love to completely dismantle. Privatisation has across the board made services worse than the NHS. We're not getting a better service and it's costing more money because private companies charge more money than the NHS would cost to just run that themselves. The government knows this. It's all their friends that are working in these private companies. It's just another way of handing money out of the public, public purse and into private pockets. And so we're here to stop privatisation of the NHS and for Palestine, it's the same fight, it's the same battle. In the last 15 to 20 years, more and more services and aspects of infrastructure of the NHS has been sold off. That started with private finance initiatives of large building projects under Tony Blair and Labour, and has continued apace under the Tories. I think even as staff, we're unaware of it a lot of the time. You constantly find out that services you use at work are privatised that you didn't even know. We need to invest in in-house technology and information governance in order to build a for patient, for population system rather than ship it off to a company from the US costing a huge amount of taxpayers' money. It's a picket rather than a protest, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, no, of course it does, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, stay safe. I hope you don't get rained on. Yeah, yeah. All right, have a, have a good day. Obviously, with the group that it is, I think it's going to be fine. There's something called the Dahia Doctrine, which is a doctrine that was originally coined by Zionists in their onslaught in Lebanon. And what this is, is essentially the indiscriminate targeting of civilians in a way to get civilians to lose their support for popular resistance. And so what we're seeing today is this doctrine being employed in Gaza, but the people of Gaza remaining to be steadfast and um, unwavering in their support for the Palestinian resistance. Many people have been fighting against colonization, settler colonialism and imperialism as early as 1936 with the Arab uprising and the resistance and the steadfastness of the people of Palestine we're seeing today is really a continuation of this long legacy. This is the rationale for the imperialists uniting in their stance on supporting the genocide in Gaza. They cannot allow the masses of the world to be inspired by the Palestinian spirit. But we are here to show them that we have already been inspired. We want a ceasefire now. We want the UK to stop arming Israel and we want an end to the occupation. We need to see this contract come back in house, Palantir removed from the NHS and a true public health system re-established in the UK. We know that if we put enough pressure we can stop companies from being complicit. We saw G4S pull out of Israel after years of campaigning, Puma pulling out of Israel as well. It's just now of time.